Why, hello there, everybody! My name is Fretex, and welcome to an upcoming game called Norland. This is a pretty interesting game. It's kind of like Rimworld with Crusader Kings. You kind of run around making a colony or kingdom with your own little dudes running around the map, but um, like other games like Rimworld, you actually control the royal family with peasants doing their own stuff in the background. It's pretty cool. I like it. It's kind of like more my kind of version of Rimworld. I don't want to have to micromanage 200 people or whatever, or like, what, 10, whatever they have in that game. I want to micromanage a king and reign supreme a across the entire known world as my family tries to murder me. Basically, just like real life. Anyway, so this is actually a demo. They sent it to me the other day. It's been updated since I last played it, since the old Steam Fest, like over a year ago. So I will say it's only got 28 days and there's still stuff to be aware of. It's an alpha version. There may be issues. There may be just horrific bugs. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> Hopefully it works out okay. But anyway, so we're going to start a new game. We're going to play through a full game of the demo. I have played this before, as I mentioned earlier. Last time it was actually a bit of a disaster, to be honest. Um, I rescued my wife from Bandit. She then had an affair with a foreign ruler who then came back and invaded my kingdom. So basically it was a pretty bad time. But this time I'm sure it'd be totally fine. So I can actually do some few things here. What is this? Father and daughter, husband, wife, and... Let's do this one. Husband, wife, and child. So... I can kind of customize it a little bit like most games you would expect of this type. It looks pretty cool. I'm not really going to spend too much time on it because it's going to be running for only a few days, of course. It's not going to be too crazy here. What's this? Oh, are these like different cultures? Values. Peace. Xenophobia. Caden. <laughs> I hate those damn Cadens. Ah, I have to role play as a guy that just despises them. So is that? Oh. Okay, so there's different choices which do different things. There's a lot of flavor text here, but one that's jumping out to me, for multiple reasons, is going to be Cade. Why? Let's look at their values, everybody. They're, they value strength above all. They also hate the Varns, which I now, for some reason, all of a sudden hate as well. I'm not sure how it's even happening, but it's just changed in my mind. They have a production bonus for weapons and armor, as well as bows, and their knowledge is of military means. Basically, this is perfect. I want to play as these guys. Now, uh, I'm not sure if I can do much else. What is this? There are a few traits and stuff. I can change it, which apparently makes me older, which is quite interesting. It's actually kind of a shame I can't just start as a guy with nothing else going on. Like, no wife. Do you know what? That's too many daughters. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe not. Let's do, this. Let's do two brothers. So the plan is going to be, everybody, that my brother is going to be called Loki. Unfortunately, he was actually meant to be first in line for the throne, but he was known for being, let's just say, a bit envious of other success and had some pretty dire work ethic, let's put it that way. So my father actually decided to give me the throne instead. Maybe he resents me for this. I can't tell you at this time, but um, we'll have to see as we play for a demo if Loki holds a grudge and may try and kill me at some point. And he he's known to be wildly beautiful which means that he has interests from everyone around him. Kind of meaning that he has a lot of connections in various ways, but also a bit suspicious at times because he has a lot of connections to foreign parties. Now, what's his main thing gonna be? Probably persuasion. How do I change this? Ah, so what does this do? Talent, a special predisposition of a character towards a specific skill. Okay, can have zero to two, ta wait, can I give myself two talents? Oh my God, that's, screw you, Loki. I'm changing this, okay? <laughs> you don't get any talent. You're worthless. Uh, so if I make him... I can make him older, right? If I give him more skills. That's quite interesting. So what I'll do... I'll give him like a generic... I don't know how any of these really work. It's been too long. He's a bit older than me, but he's very good at manners and persuasion. Which is kind of consigning itself. Me, however... My name is vastly different. My name is Four. Because I'm going to go with the uh, god thing. Let's go with it, guys. Screw it. Apparently my stats suck, <laughs> but I'm very young. I actually have talents in command and combat. Like I said that the reverse way around while I was pressing the buttons there. How do I even manage that? So what does this do? Difference in combat skills determines the probability of evading enemy attacks. Command determines the magnitude of the morale bonus for warriors in the squad. Interesting. So I'm going to make myself... Oh, I've got loads of different things here. No, <laughs> maybe not that one. What can I pick that isn't too bad? I feel like I would be reckless. So I'm going to be reckless and homely. I want to be like a bit better because I'm only 18, right? So we're trying to increase my skills a little bit. I don't know the general thing here, how this technically works. Because of course, it's a new game that's not even come out yet. Wow, that's a big increase there. Holy, oh my God. Is it 
scale a little bit based of what I'm doing. Let's make myself this. We will be 7-7. Seven, seven. 26 years old, that's fine. There you go. I got very generic stats apart from my command and combat. And apparently I get a thing. When this character trains warriors at the training ground, they gain twice as many experience points. And also I defend the city. The leadership of this lord inspires members of his squad when defending their hometown, doubling their pain threshold and bravery. That's really cool. I like it. So look-wise, I think I'm already pretty good, actually. I, look, I feel like I'm four as I am. I feel like pretty powerful. No, I like the big-ass beard. <laughs> I've never shaved a day in my life, and I probably never will. Are we going to go for um, Marvel 4? Or are we going to... Let's just go for, like... I can't tell the difference between these two. Let's go for this one. I'm a stocky man. What can I say? Okay, everybody. I think apart from this, I think we're happy to go. Let's press continue, shall we? So do I get to pick my start? Oh, this is a bit different. I don't remember having so many options for before. So you can pick a starting zone. This is all, I think, semi-roundly generated. Oh, wait, you got difficulties. Easy, normal, and hard. Clearly, I'm going to start at a hard location because that's just generally what I do. But <laughs> we're playing the worst possible place. Wait, what am I doing? I can make my lands bigger? This is definitely different than the demo I played. This is awesome. Okay, no, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to start as a frost keep. Let's make my banner. The blue lion. There's no blue. The the white lion. <laughs> Damn it. Excellent. Next. What do I do now then? So I'm frost keep. Next. Game parameters. Prisoner. A member of the noble family has been captured by bandits during a recent raid on your younger settlement. Oh. By touch. No one takes your noble family seriously because all your laws have been blind since birth. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but demonstrate remark uh, remarkable management skills and kind to make all your neighbors see the true greatness. The hammer way. Your lord is renowned for craftsmen. Your lords are renowned craftsmen, but poor merchants. You start with books about blacksmithing. I'm going to play where I have to rescue my brother so I can go and fight something. Crisis, what is this? Shortly after the start of the game, the unholy horde will appear on the map. Oh my god, that sounds amazing. A formidable opponent that will burn down all cities in his path. You cannot negotiate with the horde. You can either defeat it by capturing the initial city or try and survive for 55 days, after which it will disappear on its own. <gasps> Oh, this basically this is a really bad idea. Is that what I'm understanding here? This is only going to be a one-off, by the way. So it's going to end in bad times to everybody involved. So what we do... After war... We're going to do this. Hardcore mode? <laughs> what does this do? Now, I'm going to, as I'm doing a YouTube series, this one. All challenges start from day one. Require high concentration, multitasking, and knowledge of the game. <laughs> Let's pick this one. What can possibly go wrong? The beginning of the story. Norland, the year is 2,898. Wait, what? What's happened to the, the technology? <laughs> 200 years have passed since the great Crimson Empire perished in the flames of the religious war. Its former provinces have become barbaric kingdoms kept from mutual destruction only by the all-powerful church of Holy Sophia. While the Holy Prophets speak in the impending end of the world in one of the small kingdoms, the dream of the birth of a new empire is taking shape. Okay, so here we are, everybody. This is my new thing. We've apparently got forest bandits in my lands, which is probably not very good. They're, I mean, this is my lands. They're actually, like, on the main map. So we have our main city we build, and then you can go out of your armies or trade and whatever. Go around the map and do different things. It's pretty awesome. So we've got Godfrey here. I didn't change your... I'm so confused. I swear I changed your name to four. There you go. We've got four and Loki. So, of course, Loki is currently having a bad day. He's, uh, Loki is suffering in captivity and being subjected to torture. No one knows how long they will last. Bandits are demanding a ransom of 330 pounds, but you can also attempt to free a captive by force. This action can be executed with the help of messenger. So, of course, me being me, I refuse to give anybody any money. I will spend more money to get an army to go and rescue my dear brother, who will probably not try and kill me at some point in the game. So, since the last time I've played, it seems they've updated the UI a bit, because, uh, honestly, I don't recognize most of this at all. <laughs> it was over a year ago, so it's a bit of a while ago. So, kind of like other carny builders, you directly build onto the map. Uh, unlike other ones, though, like RimWorld, you don't go and build specific buildings like uh, brick by brick. You have presets. You can see here we can go and buy, build like a den. We can go and build barracks or night patrols, that kind of thing. It's more of like a... 
more of a higher level fellow, because of course I'm the king, and I have peasants. At least I think I have peasants. Do I have peasants? <laughs> I should have peasants somewhere in the game. So first things first, we probably want to start getting going. So what I've got, I've got some noble houses where lords live, which is your characters on top of the screen here. And we also have a dormitory, which houses a bunch of apparently Earth Nation warriors or people. Where are they? Oh, are we all inside each other? There's a giant party going on inside the main base, apparently. That's a bit concerning. So I actually believe I need to... How does this even work? Assign units to various locations? By the looks of it, yes. Okay, so probably the first thing to do is let's set up a basic economy, shall we? So we're going to need to get ourselves some lumberjacking. So I'll build a wood cutter over here. You can start cutting stuff down. Uh, building for extracting wood from nearby forests. One working would use 22 wood. Is that Pacific based on where it's put down? Not sure. He does something. <laughs> and we've also got a Ruta Bagas of Groon, which is probably a food source. So they probably put some of these down as well. Oh, there's fertility? Interesting. That appears we don't have a region where I can get good fertility. It's just 60% absolutely everywhere. So I guess in that sense, I will put down some fields here. Now, the thing I'm a bit concerned about is it apparently produces with free workers 19 food. Is that per day? Every 10 days, it requires fertilization by burning 20 wood. And then it, I presume then it produces 19 food. Is that a lot or is that not a lot? Demand for product every day. Interesting. So if that is actually in fact per day, it suggests that I only have plus one. So I'm gonna put down two of these. Wait, how did that <laughs> how did I manage this? No, it must be it must be beautiful. It must be correct. So maybe I put it why is it off center, everybody? That's a bit confusing. Okay, remember, this is actually an alpha, so hopefully they fix that. I would know a friend that would probably be bold at this point. There you go, that's perfect. <laughs> he, if he tries to make fields in the video game, he will probably spend like six days just putting down one square. He doesn't get a lot of gaming done, really. He just builds farms. That's <laughs> pretty much it. Okay, so with the basic buildings put down, I think we need to also have some other things as well. So there's a brewery, which is where alcohol is brewed, which is fair enough. Paper workshops, services, tavern, a place for people to relax after work. I'm going to go out and presume we probably need a lot of these. Uh, I do believe that people have... Hi. So people actually have requirements. They want to sleep, food, rest, and piety. I believe this is what may expand out as the thing goes further on. I can also do certain actions. I can try and marry this person. I can bribe them for sex, apparently. Uh, I don't know why I would do that, but I can. <laughs> With holy rings, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of different resources you can try and do here. So uh, for my actual character, I'm actually going to see what I can do. What can I try and do here? Educate, bishop, interesting. I think we need to get certain buildings built to have more options for my characters. So I'm going to be very militaristic. So we're going to put down another building as well. We're going to try and build a barracks. As well as set up some night patrols. So this is actually quite important because uh, you need to patrol your lands from various threats. As well as things such as bandits or maybe like dangerous animals and stuff. So I'm going to put up some things for night patrols. Cool. And also some day patrols. I don't know why they're separated. I must admit I do find that perplexing. I guess we can just have the day patrols particularly around the Lord's Hall and this place where the night patrol patrol everywhere in case we get attacked by something. Uh, then again, I'm just doing this based of what I think is probably correct at this point. I might be completely wrong. <laughs> uh, so also, let's probably... Let's have a look at the people. What are they doing? Production, finances. Interesting. So I believe, if I recall from the last I played this, your people actually buy resources off you. So they will go and they will purchase like the meats, the food, the flour, and they will consume it. That's kind of how you make your money. As well as I also believe there is some kind of rent system. Though I may be incorrect there. Uh, I, oh, also I pay them per day as well. So it's kind of like a continual system of like, I pay them, they work for me, they then buy their food and resources. It's a continual motion. I believe. Uh, let's see. So I'm also going to put down some other buildings as well. Let's get the tavern down. I put it in the middle of the city. Actually, let's put it on the side here. We put tavern. An altar so people can pray to their gods. And they can pray to the almighty Odin. And we also put down a warehouse which can store 
goods for various things. So you also need to research stuff as well. So if we try and put down this fella, we can put our laws inside to learn various things and new technologies to get ourselves some more options. Okay, cool. So you probably see already, they're kind of running around doing things. We've already set up ourselves this lugging, uh, lugging, <laughs> lugging, the luggers. We've already got ourselves a lumber mill, which requires a manager. Now, I believe managers are your laws and need to do various things to give bonus production and also to work in the first place. So if I do this, I believe four will visit every once in a while to make sure they're working correctly, give them orders, that kind of thing, and just go from there. Uh, let's do the same for all these, because as I'm the only human being that's actually... In the, ca in the game right now, I need to make sure I'm the manager of everything to actually get things to work. Hey, friend, cut down the tree over there if you don't mind. <laughs> what do you say? How long am I going to talk for? <laughs> I have many questions. Anyway, so it looks like I am automatically doing... Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't remember this from before. So I can actually put down who goes into it. So workers can provide a maximum amount of production bonus here. Will be automatically hired by this building. But I can also just be like, only Vans go here. Or only loyalists. That's pretty cool. I like that idea. So if I have like a really important place, I could be like only the loyalists to my kingdom are allowed to be here to do their jobs and whatnot. I kind of like that. I think it's pretty awesome. So the actual building builders come from this hall, which seems to be able to level up and stuff as well. Uh, the main building that of the city where lords spend their time. It can also serve as storage for gold. It allows you to hire building builders and servants. So what do servants do? Is there a way I can hotkey over the job? No. But I presume they just carry around goods between certain locations. Okay, so these builders are doing their thing. And he's now cutting down a tree. Look at him go. He's so fast. So I'm not sure if he gets better at this over time if he keeps doing the job. Or he's kind of set in stone for the rest of his life. It'd be interesting to see as we play through the game a little bit. Oh, good. We're actually just getting money. Uh, sorry, resources that comes in. It's just plus one production. Some games I play where it's just like, ah, oh, you get f stuff every tick or so. Instead of just being all the time. What is this here? Oh, it's prop I like this. This is like the Paradox Games. You've got like a bunch of things. So we need to get a barracks. We have a, we have a weak army. We have no alcohol production. We have no tavern that's functioning. And there's nowhere for people to pray. So I have kind of inadvertently solved a lot of these problems by building things. Apart from, I haven't built myself a brewery. So I put one of these down somewhere. Let's put it down probably near the tavern. Is that the tavern there? Yes. Okay, I'll put it down next to the tavern. This is not a very graceful building, guys. This is a demo. We're just going to put stuff down and hope it's fine. <laughs> That's my general thing in life. Is like, as long as the economy works, I don't care where things are most of the time. Do so these people seem different? Are they soldiers, per chance? Yes. I think I got seven peasants and five soldiers. So this is my glorious army. Free combat skill. I got seven. So I'm a pretty much a badass compared to these people. So I remember the last time I played a demo, there was a way you can actually put down stuff to train them. But I don't know where that's gone. They seem to have removed that, which is quite interesting. Uh, yeah, so before you had the barracks where the people lived. And then in addition to that, you also then had a training ground where you go to train people to fight. Uh, and that means you have to assign your guy to go there and do various things and whatnot. So I, I do find it interesting that's gone. Perhaps they've moved it into the library. You have to research it. I, I'm not really certain at this point, though. It should be interesting to see. Uh, like I said, they clearly have worked on this. I can't... Does anyone remember, if anyone's watching? <laughs> it's always good to put that in there. Uh, when this demo was available publicly, I think it was over a year ago. It was uh, quite, a, quite a far way away. Point manager, that guy. So I will point out... It does seem we have no unemployed people to work on these farms, which is kind of concerning. Though it does also say that we're going to get plus seven. There you go. Plus seven migrants. So that means they are now filling in here and they should start working on all the different fields. Which is pretty good to see. That's pretty good. I like it. So that does also mean oh, I don't actually have enough housing right now. Is that a new warning? No, it's not weirdly, but I'm pretty sure we haven't got enough housing. Homeless 4. I don't like that. Let's see if we can fix that. So I kind of like Rimworld. I think everyone has different mood levels and stuff. So if we give them 
a nice new house, they will probably have a better thought process, a better mood for the future. So I'm actually going to probably try and start putting down a few different things. Maybe let's have a look at these fellas. So currently we've got the dormitory, a living space for 10 peasants. If there's a shortage of housing, homeless peasants will have to sleep on the ground or on the floor in a temple, which greatly worsens their mood. Or we can build a Pacific house, a living space for two peasants. This separates accommodation, provides them with a positive thought and improves their mood. If there's a shortage of housing, yeah, okay, fair enough. So basically you want to try and build these if required, but mostly we want to have everybody inside a peasant house. Now, I noticed that if you take it in terms of uh, eco economy thing here, it's a bit crazy, actually, because this is worth 30 for 10 houses, and this is going to be 15 for two. So it's a big difference there. However, we have 381 wood right now, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, let's build the housing quarter over by the barracks and the stuff over here. So we just start putting stuff down, I think. Uh, I can probably do like a... Can I do this? Not exactly, no. So I'll get rid of that a little bit. And we have like a little bit of a quarter for all our housing and whatnot. So currently we have 14 people. So we're going to put down quite a few houses. Uh, let's go one, two, three. And then we'll spin it around. One, two, three. We need more than that, don't we? There you go. At some point, someone will come and build those houses for us. At least I hope so. Welcome, friends. Welcome. Okay, so now I've got some basic stuff going. I kind of want to get a bigger up. What's this? There's a trader. Why, hello there. Four, go and talk to the trader. We'll see if we can uh, maybe buy some stuff. Okay, so it looks like we can buy quite a few things here. We can buy... Can I buy these? Oh, okay. Improve your relation with the matriarch to 50 so that you, the Holy Caravan will start selling you this product. So we can't go and buy high-level equipment. I believe uh, they have different tiers of weapons. They can actually sell you right here. A simple and sturdy weapon, twice as effective against daggers, but weaker against spears. So you have to have a kind of a little bit of a build when it comes to your people. You have to make sure you have a good variety of troops and also different weapons and whatnot as well. Wow. Though apparently some weapons are just badass. The most expensive and sophisticated type of weapon. It has 10 times stronger than the spear. Five times stronger than the mace, and two times stronger than the battle wax. That is crazy, everybody. Allows parrying of opponent's attacks. That's really cool. So I guess we could probably just build these spears ourselves. But yeah, it's kind of interesting. Okay, well, fair enough then. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that too much for now. We might need to... <laughs> to be fair, I don't know what I even need at this point. So we're just going to let people do their own thing for now. I'm actually going to put down as a priority, though, building the library. Because that means we can probably start getting some technology down. Are they getting paid? <laughs> All the random talking, like... Okay. Knowledge. Oh, this is very different from when I last played. Unavailable knowledge. Cultural knowledge. Textbooks. Combat volumes. This is very, very different. Okay, so before, you saw I had to have a paper workshop, rice and field, rewrite, learn. Interesting. Okay, so let me just talk to this guy again one more time. We might have to try and buy knowledge books to get technology, but I don't remember seeing anything while I was talking to him. Oh, there's a full-on book thing, okay. So I can buy books to get experience. I can buy books to build certain things. I have got a bit of money on me, so maybe worth getting a few things. Captives, keep prisoner, scaffold. Scaffold? A place for carrying out punishments. Oh, I thought it was like a building thing. That, that shows where mine go, my mind goes. <laughs> of course it's an evil thing. So I like how you can kind of see here that it does different things. If I go and uh, just have a look at these different texts here. Living space of prisoners. That's quite interesting. Captives. Normally armies of captives move 50% slower without them. Uh, normally armies of captives move 50% slower than without them. Wow, that's pretty cool. I like this. I say we buy a book for the herbalists. Which means we can probably heal people if they're diseased. I'm also going to get the thing for the temple. Which is probably going to be a better version than what we're using at the altar there. A temple of the cult of the mother Sahia. Praying the temple includes a morning service. Restores tempiety. Priests will perform weddings, funerals and visit the sick. And who can also do sermons. That seems like a great investment. We buy that. 
And also the command bonus as well. Okay, fair enough. I kind of want to grab a few things here, but it's kind of interesting to see how this works. I don't want to spend too much, because one, it's a demo anyway. I want to make sure they go bankrupt, because that would be pretty funny. <laughs> and we'll just see how things go for now. So I'll buy these flour out, and then when we get the library going, we can start researching things as we go there. Okay, perfect. I guess for now, we've kind of got to wait around a little bit. There's a lot of buildings to construct, and there's not enough people to go and do it. <laughs> so it's a bit crazy. Uh, Wood-wise, it should be okay as well. I'm just going to let these guys on maximum speed. I don't know if the warehouse might also provide a way of helping out with builders. And a building where you can hire additional... Okay, perfect. So what I'll do, I will ask my person to go and build the warehouse first so that we can get faster building speed and we can go from there. i still got quite a few debuffs and stuff and we haven't got anything else producing yet. But it's just a matter of time for things to get going. we still got a lot of time though. So I'm especially surprised at how long I've been playing and I'm only on day one. <laughs> so maybe my idea of doing this in one video is going to be a bit uh, naive to say the least. I feel like we're going to have to do this over a multiple days. <laughs> build, my friends. Produce what we need to succeed. Excellent. Okay, so we can now make an additional three builders, which is pretty badass. So that's literally doubling our building output. If I was a man with more experience, I perhaps would have built this thing first. <laughs> uh, keep going for... I think the more I give him, the less chance he can go through every building a day. So he gets a bit overburdened, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully we get some more migrants at some point, because we just don't really have a lot at this point. Uh, go for... Go! Talk to everybody. What we can do, actually, is I'm going to temporarily turn off this building so that people go elsewhere. We do not need this many people across the place. Uh, that is for sure. Uh, next up, can you build a library? Because I want to start researching. Because my character does things throughout the day, but if he has spare time, I want to start getting technology points as well. Oh, Tam's coming up. There it is. Oh, did they, did they finish it? Yes, trader required be pretty important, I think. Is there a way that I can set certain jobs above other jobs? Let's have a quick look around, shall we? So this is the expense graph, so we can see how much we're selling the food for and whatnot. You can actually limit how much you sell per day as well. So if I want meat, I can say, oh, look, you guys can't have the meat. This is only for the nobles or something like that. Uh, so we actually already have alcohol in our repertoire, so we can start selling that right away. And apparently we can only sell 10 a day, which I find quite interesting. But I guess once we get that sorted out so we can make more and more and more, it's fine. We just go through. Though it does say we can infinitely sell moonshine. I wonder if the brewer can initially only create moonshine and beer is more of a, uh, well, higher tier kind of thing. I don't think you can probably make beer from turnips anyway, or whatever they're called in this game. So also you can see the wages of people as well. You can pay them different rates to probably get happier. So I would personally, if I was playing this game as a full game, I would have a very high paid, kind of like a semi-noble group of just warriors. They would be my knights of my realm, but very well looked after. I can also change how I affect people as well when it comes to prisoners and stuff as well. Though I must admit, I don't think I would probably do much of prisoners. That's not really my kind of thing, to be honest. Let's have a quick look at the world map, actually, shall we? Now let's see, I can trade automatically. How does that work? So you can see there's a bunch of different events. You can see that we uh, we can hire bandits to come and join us, which is quite interesting. We can go and buy slaves from a nearby band leader as well. And also, of course, I've got my brother here. So a bunch of different events. I can also just take my characters off and go and do talk to them if I wanted to. I can go off and do politics. I can demand vassalage. I can even become a vassal of them. I can go and attack them, plunder them, send the game. A lot of things you can try and do. I think it's a pretty cool system so far. Uh, so far, though, no one here actually has... Wait, is someone coming this way? Interesting. I don't know who that guy is or why he's leaving, but he's going somewhere. <laughs> so apparently a, a king's coming here. A king of the Vans, which we apparently I have to hate as my character. He doesn't seem to be hostile, though. He just seems to be traveling around, seeing what's going on in the world. I presume the AI is doing their own thing as well, being up their own territories and doing various things, which sounds pretty fun. Now, uh, let's go back to my city, shall we? So things are looking pretty good right now. We've got a lot of buildings being constructed. I actually have five builders instead of only three now, so things are a bit faster. I'll make sure I turn that off later on once I get the uh, buildings set up and built, because I don't need to have that many builders. The library... I know, right, man? The weather's terrible. The library has been completed. So, if I go to the knowledge screen, I can now try and get my lord to try and go and learn something. Ah, oh, that's a pain. So I can actually go and make a paper workshop. However, I do not actually have 
any tools to do so. So if I knew that earlier, I probably would have bought some tools. So I think you can use this if you have knowledge of something. So for instance, my king knows how to make a paper workshop. So that means I can write this down, creating a book based on knowledge. The higher the law's intelligence level, the faster the book is written. Since the character is already familiar with this knowledge, the book is written and noticeably faster, it requires free paper. I think I can then use this to probably sell to people and maybe like get money from being like a knowledge base or that kind of thing. I, I like it. I think it's pretty cool. So I'm actually going to go and probably do Herbalist, Hops, Fills and Beer. What would be the best thing to do first? Because even if I go and get the technology to, for mining for like stuff in the ground and whatnot, we do have a limitation that we don't know how to make any weapons or anything. So that's a bit of a limitation for sure. Also at the same time, hops, filters and beards, rye and mill. So we can also try and get ourselves some more efficient technology when it comes to um, making food and also beer, which is two different things as well. I'm going to say for now, I'm going to go to the herbalist first. So I'm going to ask him to study the book with the aim of acquiring the knowledge. The higher the law's intelligence level, the faster the knowledge is acquired. La, 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 la. This action will form daily until we learn it. Okay, fair enough. And also I can rewrite it. So I can make a copy of it. Interesting. Okay, anyway, so we're going to learn this book for now. I will do that myself. Thank you very much. And we go from there. I, I'm kind of curious. I want to try and attack these enemies. But I'm not sure how it's going to go. So I'm actually, what we're going to do, because this is a demo, right? It's not going to be a long-term thing anyway. I'm actually going to go. And I'm going to hire these bandits. Both think it's a bit weird, but the intention is going to be. I'm going to hire the bandits. Uh, I'll send a messenger to do it. Requires one paper. Do I have paper? Yes. So we're going to go and hire that man. We're going to have an army of, what would that be? 12 people or so and then we're gonna go and attack the barons get my brother back if you get my brother back i can do more actions per day so that'd be pretty handy for me to do ah there i am i'm learning i must transcribe my knowledge so do i see like a progress ah there you go you can very very faintly see there is a bit of white which i think means it's gonna tick over over actually if i go fast speed let's see what happens Yes, there you go, that's how it's working. He's very slowly learning the skills required to do things. Uh, what I might also do as well, because I'm kind of curious, I can upgrade this. One additional job slot. Total production increased by 20%. More migrants have arrived as well. Cool. Build the better workshop, my friends. So we've got some more workers. I have homeless still, that's fine, whatever. Is everyone working? Healthy unemployed, zero. So everyone has a job in some point or another. What are these people here? Waiting to be hired. What are you? So I can grant them a, a title. Hire a free lord for 10 days. You'll be able to assign them the same task as your own lords, inspect buildings, lead squads, and more. The cost depends on the level of persuasion skill. So what is he good at? Persuasion manners. He's very similar to my brother. Very, very similar to my brother. I can also grant him a title. I presume that means I might actually bring him into my like my re Lord repertoire, but I'm not a some sense certain, so we'll leave that for now. Although, as the trader has arrived, I'm going to quickly send myself over there and we'll quickly buy one of the items we need, which was the plus one of that tool we require. It does seem that the Lord comes over every day anyway, so it's not too crazy. Hi, buddy. I would like to purchase... A tool. Tax on warriors. The holy family allows you to have your own army, but in return requires payment of a tax, the amount of which represents the amount of combat skills. Oh! So I'm being oppressed by the church. That's what I see from this situation. How dare they oppress me? <laughs> we'll have to break away. Done. Oh, I leveled up by doing that. So that means I start to get better stats now. That's pretty cool. Speaking of armies... It has been hired. Seven bandits have agreed to join your army. Relations with neighbors minus seven. The reason I've done this, by the way, is I'm going to go out and presume that there's going to be a bit of a death in a second when we go and attack people. What is this? What is happening? It seems that they're requesting my assistance. Torrents. 
from Wanderlore is becoming stronger and plans to annex Dragonhorn to his kingdom soon. Therefore, King Dragonhorn Sigoth is seeking help from all neighbours who are willing to stand by his side. You can send your army to help defend. This is awesome. <laughs> I I will defend the weak from the enemy that will transpire against us. Uh, let's see. So I don't want to do anything yet. I'm going to wait a little bit for my army to arrive. Then we're going to go and mobilize the army. Head over. Is it already happening? I think they're already being attacked. I'm not certain, but that doesn't look very good, does it? Hmm. Actually, I think that was reinforcements going to assist him. Because it's got the same flag. And that's his army there. His army is huge! 14 people? That's pretty crazy. Okay, I'm going to mobilize my arm anyway. We will assist you, brother. So how do I do this? I think he's also got assistance from up north as well. I will send assistance myself. On local map on global map. Interesting. So let me just figure this out quickly. So this is my army now. It's quite vast. I'm going to create a new army as myself. I'm going to add all these warriors to it. Perfect. Uh, we don't actually have enough arms or weapons for this. It's going to be a very awkward situation when we go fight someone. <laughs> we're fine weapons on the field, guys. Don't worry about it. Or should we just take our most powerful weak people? Let's take eight people so we have enough weapons for everybody. You guys hold down the fort or something. Okay, create the glorious army. Four! We must ride to war! Okay, it's going to be awesome. What is this? Protect the archers. Oh, does that mean I hang back in the vanguard? I can also stand back as well. Curious. Anyway, so let's go and help our friend, shall we? I will send the squad four. We must ride, men. Gondor calls for aid. Yes, I think they do. I'm not really certain. Okay, apparently my soldiers are becoming ready for the battle. One of my men actually has full armor on because he got there first. <laughs> The other one's not so much. This is, is this my glorious army? They got their money, they got their weapons, and we're prepared to go to war. Are we going to start leaving in a second? Off we go. Good luck, Four. I will keep myself apprised of your endeavours with bated breath. Squad has returned to province? Oh, did they give up or something? Oh, I think it already. I think the battle happened and they won or something, because nothing seems to have changed. That's a shame. I was going to go and fight in a war. I guess I was too late there. The king decides that it's time to announce the ambition that will determine the future of your noble family. Conqueror. Power. Leads to prosperity of the dynasty. Add free vassals to your kingdom. Unifier. Only, be helping, only by helping each other can we stand strong. Expand your alliance to free cities to free provinces. Fertile. The more population, the more strength. Increase population to 69. Economic. Daily production of goods worth 1,000. I'm going to go for Conqueror. <laughs> Every king has ambition. If they are not pursued over time, the king will begin to feel like a failure. However, achieving them provides a strong boost. If you have chosen ambitions in the field of production, you need to study knowledge and build more complex buildings. Ambitions in the population sphere are achieved by satisfying these of your peasants in housing, goods, food, and alcohol. Political ambitions are achieved by creating states headed by your king. Click on the city of the globe map and the politics menu to find out what is needed. Okay, so anyway, apart from all that, I think now that that's all happened, I'm then I'm going to go and rescue my brother. Four? Four? <laughs> Four? We will attack the bandits. Done. Okay, we'll give him a little bit of time again because it took time to get ready last time. And then they send them off. I'm confused what these people are coming to. Are these more migrants coming my way? What's happening? Expected they migrants. Negative four. Are they leaving because they haven't got housing? That does seem like that's something that will happen, unfortunately. Also, I haven't got enough housing for my army as well. So we should probably put down another barracks at some point as well. There you go. What the hell? The best warrior apart from the king. Oh, he's, he's not dead. He just fainted. <laughs> that's not a very good start for my army, is it? I think I sent them out when they weren't even ready. Okay, so my king's on his way to go and attack the enemy. So I have to say I'm a bit confused because he's gone off between enemy territory to go over there. <laughs> it's in your own lands, man. Why are you going around other people? That's crazy. Move to engage. Yeah, the UI is very tiny right now, but we are in battle. My archers are already shooting away, which is pretty good to see. Oh, wow, look at that guy got wrecked already. 
kill them. I think we got a pretty good chance of winning this one. There's not many of them, there's a lot of us. Very cool. Deployed, eight. Dead, zero. Enemies, dead and captured. Band of Cap Destroyer, Legend of the Neighbors plus five, Atchu plus nine, and loot has been obtained. So my brother has now been rescued and is going back to my camp. Luki has been freed and will soon return to your city. So I'm going to go out and say that I should probably fix this so I can see again. Because it was a bit crazy before. Let me just put that back. There you go, that's better. <laughs> I can't help myself. My eyes don't go that far. I haven't got enough zoom in. Unfortunately, not yet anyway. Not yet. Cool. So we have to wait for them to return to the base. We've gone full speed here so they can hope a little bit. Orders. Brother and Loki are incoming. Good to see. I don't actually know if Loki actually had the ability to do much when it came to... He's good at talking, right? So I guess he could be the one that goes and like does diplomacy for now and whatnot. That, that kind of thing. But we have to see. Those people are pissed. What's your problem, my friend? Holy Sophia has forsaken me. Needs piety. I guess this was not enough. There's also we need to try and get ourselves some um, temples going at some point. I presume once they're back, I can also try and get Loki to study stuff as well, but I'm not certain. Regardless, so the soldiers are back. Four can be a manager of various things. If I go and look at the stat difference, what's Loki good at? So he was good at persuasion and that fella. Uh, so manners. Influences interest in the catch from other lords. Determines the effectiveness of actions related to influencing other characters. So basically he's very good at being a bit of a naughty person, let's put it that way. Yeah, perhaps we can send off some people to try and talk to these people. Maybe I can send off Loki to go over there and just do a peace treaty or be an envoy to try and increase our relations with them. A lot of different things we can try and do. Anyway, for now, I want to see, can I do double learning at the same time? I can do double learning! Okay, I want you to also learn the temple, Loki. Now, as Loki hasn't got a lot to do, because I think he's not a manager or anything, he should, in theory, have the ability to... just spend pretty much all day just trying to learn there. We have to send off four, though, because he's not currently doing anything when it comes to breweries. So we want to get that open and running. You've not been over there either. The problem with me sending off four everywhere is that he's actually meant to be in charge of everything. So if I was playing properly, I probably would have made my second character a good manager and they would have just handled the business for me while I focus on fighting and stuff. But Oh, these flags have a patrol radius now. So in that case, I'll delete a lot of these flags. So we have large radius patrol. Perfect. So that is so much easier than what I was thought it was going to be doing because I can just have a few and just have them in the middle to do like everything. <laughs> uh, maximum radius. Done, done. What is this? The village chief of Clamport has bought tribute. Oh yeah, so inside my country, I've got two little villages that assign me stuff. So I can go and try and get tribute from them, I think. Oh no, I'm not doing that anymore. I saw it before I had to go and get the tribute. Oh, he's already bought it. So I've been given some basic food and also some wheat as well, which is pretty cool. Flesh wolf attack? What? What the hell is this? Four! We must go and fight the thing. Not people that are pissed off though. Why are they so angry? <laughs> I need to look into that at some point. Uh, around the people. I should be able to control him normally. Yes, I can. Craig. Four, go and attack the death wolf. Follow me, men. We must defeat the wolves. I think it's killing a lot of people right now. It that I, I can't see behind the tree. But I presume it's not PG-13, so we're going to probably want to try and kill this guy before it goes too crazy here. Go, man! <laughs> They've already got weapons! We're punched them to death, sir! I can take care of this. I am the master fighter four. What is this? Injuries. I presume it'll die at some point. 
Ah, it's getting annoyed. It's bleeding. Good thing that I'm tanking, though, because it'd be kind of awkward otherwise. I think. I imagine you don't want to be trying to fight. Oh, this guy's got a weapon. <laughs> oh, he's too late. Never mind. And wait, is it still? Wait, what are you doing? It's dead, isn't it? I'm not. I'm pretty sure it's dead now. Perfect. Good job, everybody. Uh, disband. Everyone back to work. Thank you for fighting. In the area of our fin and negulary bed. Indeed. Indeed. Exactly what that's what she said. So yeah, basically I was trying to look at the stats here. I, I've had them running around too much. I probably should only leave in a day when they've actually got themselves some rest. Otherwise it's a bit of a problem, I think. Uh, also, apparently there have been two wolves, because that guy is already carrying one around, so I don't know where that one even came from. <laughs> but luckily someone seemed to have killed it without me even realising. Also, we're making way too much food at the moment. Quite other things. So maybe we can try and get this brewery working properly. Uh, producing... Moonshine. You are doing that, right? You are making the old work moonshine. <laughs> Oh, it's not actually working right now. Let me just speed forward time a little bit. I hope they start making stuff automatically. If I go to production... Oh, there you go. Handy. Oh, do I love doing seal. So we're going to make it... We're going to make them create 50 a day. Which potentially is going to create a lot. It's going to use a lot. But in theory, if we get up to that point, we shouldn't be using that too much of it. I'm not sure how much we're using a day in terms of food anyway. But hopefully we've got enough. And then we can start making more money with the old uh, thing here. In terms of learning, though, we're still smashing it out. I hope we get there quite soon. We still have loads of unemployed people. We need more jobs, man. <laughs> There's not enough jobs. Okay, we put down the paperwork shop. So we can start doing that. I'm also going to probably put down additional other things as well. Let's put down additional brewery, so we can get that going really, really fast at some point. I'm also going to put down another warehouse. Because it seems there's like a movement bonus thing for like people doing certain jobs. Here, net to soul. Isn't net to drugs? Yeah, I'm not going to have anything to do with that game. I refuse. I'm not going to have a drug lord empire in this tiny time. What is this? Tonight, the last emperor Maximilian appeared to me. The loving family has betrayed me. They have strayed from the covenants of the Mother Sophia to seize the Crimson Throne. Your family, my descendants, and your destiny to challenge the church to claim my castle and establish a new empire. But first you must unite Norland with pen or sword. It seems I have found the purpose for our house. Unite 15 Norland presents under your control as either a king or a vassal state or as a leader of a union of free cities. Reclaim yourself a new emperor and challenge the church's inquisition to seize control of the stone of faith and lay claim to the crimson flown. Cool. I like how you can be diplomatic if you want to. I'm not very diplomatic though, so I am definitely a conqueror. <laughs> I'm as diplomatic as probably, um, I can't even think of anything. Does Conan? Yeah, Conan. There you go. <laughs> Good thing we're not living in the medieval area, just guys. It'd be a bit crazy. Which pause, I'm just going to go out here and say as well, I'm also going to put double down the lumberjacking, because I imagine we might need a lot of it at some point. We're putting one of those down there. Loki had a heartfelt conversation with Thor. Oh. Thor, it is time to marry the Lord. Let's have a look, shall we? So I know I can try and marry people from across the place. I can try and marry a... Can I try and marry her? Can I see her stats or something? Game says no. Wolf hunting. I don't know what her past. I don't know anything about her. Oh, there you go. Lustful, reckless. So you're good at persuasion. She seems like a Loki kind of girl to me. Oh. That's sad. <laughs> Damn it. Spend time with. Oh, that's pretty cool. I can take them wolf hunting. That's pretty. I like it. So for someone like me that just wants to fight all the time, I can try and just figure that out. Is there other people we can try and perhaps marry? We can only see a few lords right now, though. So there doesn't seem to be that many options. She's literally the only one. I'm going to try and uh, take her wolf hunting. Let me see how that goes. Okay, where am I at? 
Go. Woo her, my lord. <laughs> so imagine going out on a date and going hunting. I guess some people might. It might work for some people. Dawning's the manager. Okay, we'll make Loki the manager for these fellas so we actually have stuff going on while he's heading out. So we've got a paper guy we can also use to sell resources. Because I think that guy appears every day anyway. The old research man. Uh, the old caravan. So we can make sure we build things. Do until... It requires tools to make... What? Oh, there's better than that. Do until you make 10. I haven't got any tools anyway. But just so we know we can do something like that. Construction. Services. Temple. Oh, Loki. Have you finished your research? So he has. I didn't realize. Uh, let's also go for the mine. And I'm going to start producing. I hope this will work. I'm going to start putting down the foundations of the temple. So we put it in the same kind of period. Or same kind of area. Wait, who's this? Oh no! Four! Come back! There's a lady here! How do I do this? We must be friendly. I'm gonna hire her. I'm gonna see if I can try and marry her. Is she married or anything? No, she's not. 36. I don't care. She's a combat person. We can marry her. Lost all monogamous. She's perfect. <laughs> Okay, I'll sit here and talk to the trader as well. Which we can't do right now. This is why having Loki is pretty handy here. Okay, so we're going to try and hire her. I'm going to go and talk to the trader with Loki as well. Oh, she's been hired. Perfect. So for now... Oh, this is awesome. I'm going to go wolf hunting with myself when I return back. We'll see if we can get our relations up with her and see if we can maybe make her join us permanently. And then I'll try and marry her and it'd be perfect. I'll send Loki off at some point to go and marry the other girl, which is very, very similar to him as well. So they can be both perfectly aligned to each other. So her skills, though, is she any good at ma management? It's terrible. But at least now we've got another, another Lord. We can do, like, triple learning. Super learning. Okay, Loki, can you go and talk to the... Actually, she's better. Go and talk to the trader. Let's see if we can get some more books or something. And I'm also going to sell some stuff. So right now we're making a lot of different things. Wood's okay, I think. We need more of it anyway. I can sell some of this food, though. Wait, how much do I have to pay for my army? Oh, okay. I've got a lot of debt because of my powerful army. <laughs> Quickly, sir. We have to sell the food. That's too much. There you go. That'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to use this to probably build buy myself some more tools, which we need to make some paper apparently, which we'll get that sorted out. I'm also going to buy myself books. Training ground. That's what I knew it was in the game in the first time I played it. Training grounds. This is what I need. This allows you to instruct people to become better fighters, which I, I, I really want. Your lords and warriors will be twice as skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques regardless of their skill. That what? That's amazing! Okay, we're buying that one as well. That's that's ridiculously powerful. Fairness of warrior training at the There's so many powerful buffs. Why can't I buy this one? Oh, I'm not strong enough. I need to be level 9 knowledge to learn some of these items. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm also gonna sell these prisoners I have because um I can. <laughs> it's pretty simple as that, really. We should probably also get ourselves some more items. Produce in Weapon Forge. we got to try and keep asking this guy every day because I need to figure out... Well, we need to learn how to break our own weapons, really. Because I think every time I've used them, it's disappeared. I, I didn't think they disappeared on use. Maybe they were damaged or something. Uh, I guess we can try and just buy a bunch of spears just so we have some kind of fence force in the future. But that's going to cost... Well, no, we don't want to do that. It's too much money. Okay, trade. Done. I noticed that I'm getting so much when it comes to... I need to keep scaling up all the production buildings. Because, guys, look at this. Look look how much people we have now. It's just absolutely insane. I think I need to get more and more things. Keep building more! We need more, people! 
I know it's like we're getting more and more stuff when it comes to people. It's actually getting a bit crazy. We need to keep uh, just smashing them out and trying to get our people up and running. Probably that's why it's going to try and get ourselves the more advanced versions of different buildings and stuff as well as we keep playing the game here. I'm actually going to put down even more housing and also we need more, I think, workshops. I'm also going to keep trying to increase the amount of lumberjacks we have because it seems we're going through this very quickly. The amount of wood we need and I need to continually keep building because I keep getting more people every time. I know I can slow it down by the way if I go to my people and be like look there's a plague here don't come over here. It slows it down a little bit but still it's actually kind of concerning to be honest. There's a lot of unemployed. I know I'm working on it man. <laughs> I'm working on it. Leave me be. Moderate fatigue. Oh, apparently alcohol affects various things. So we need to make sure we're getting as much alcohol as possible. Interesting. How much are we using a day at the moment then? Oh no! <laughs> the Inquisition admission has returned with dire news. The Northwestern Forest, the so-called unholy horde, has formed. A union of forest tribes under the rule of a new heretic cult, the Dead God. This is an extremely aggressive and powerful foe that is prepared to destroy all the new kingdoms of Norland. The loving family urges all noble houses to set aside their conflicts for now and unite against this new threat. The king who brings the capital of the Unholy Horde, the House of the Dead God, to ashes will earn the gratitude of the entire world and ash their name into the history forever. Ooh. Where are they then? They're coming. The Undead Horde has been spotted. That's pretty cool, I like that. <laughs> what? What do you mean? Oh, he hasn't prayed enough. I think getting the church should have been my biggest priority at the start, because not having this church has been a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> well, everybody, apart from that, I think that's going to be today's episode. I don't know if I'm going to do another one of these. I thought I'd just do this as a bit of a uh, blind let's play the demo, if you know what I mean. I've just got in, I've played for an hour, just to show people what kind of game it's like. I believe they're working on more demos and early access at some point, so keep uh, your eyes peeled for this game. I'll put a link on the description if you want to see where the, the scheme page for it, but I, I'm, I'm liking my time of it so far. I mean, honestly, if I were to play this properly, I would do things very differently. I probably wouldn't bother around with like, having gimmick names like, such as like Loki and Four would make it and have weird stats. I would have like a manager. I will try and set things up properly, but... For now, guys, this was a fun experiment. Why, why not? Uh, I would, if people want me to do another video of this, let me know, guys. I might consider doing another one. I, this video only, got, this, this game only runs for 28 days, I believe it was. So you can effectively do quite a bit in that time, I would go and say. But for now, though, that's that, everybody. As always, please like, subscribe, and comment below, and I'll see you next time. Bye.